Hey guys, welcome to another behind the screen. So a little bit of a uh, caveat today. I was trying to come up with a topic to chat with you guys about this week and I keep coming back to the uh, digital map making that we talked about last week. And I really want to say thank you to everyone who commented. We're going to get to that in a minute. But I couldn't think of another really deep dive topic that I really wanted to get into this week. So it's kind of be a little piecemeal all over the place. Let's just talk about Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so that being said, I still have a cold. I'm going to cough. Apologies. Um, but let's talk about first the um, digital maps. So big, 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 big thank you to everyone who commented last week. Um, I <coughs> thank you. Yes. Uh huh. That's a thing. Um, so I ended up backing Dynamic Dungeons on Patreon, uh, which have amazing animated tabletop maps. They're really cool. If you haven't checked them out, definitely go do that. I'm happy to be putting some of my hard-earned Patreon money to another person's hard-earned uh, hard Patreon. Let's just share that love. I think that they are definitely onto something there. I also backed on Kickstarter, which there is still, as of right now, a uh, little over two days left to go. Um, this is tabletop app for animated tactical battle maps, which is a terrible name. Definitely get a better name. Um, but it's dmge.net if you want to check it out first. Basically, it allows you to place any map that you create into a digital tabletop, um, and it gives you very basic add a grid overlay, add fog of war, and then you can project it. So if you want to use one of the dynamic dungeons, which are the animated maps, or if you've made your own, it's basically a platform for allowing you to put those things onto a flat screen table tabletop. Um, so I'm going to be giving both of those a shot in the coming weeks as I am DMing, uh, and we'll see how it goes. I, I don't know if it's the absolute correct thing, but I think for the little bit of money that I put in, $25 total at this point, I, 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 I'm, I'm happy to have that be a test run trial and I can better understand what I need and then make even more determinations. So thank you to everyone on YouTube and on Twitter who helped me figure out the next step in my journey to having even cooler maps. Uh, saddest part of this is that I did in fact DM this past weekend. Actually, that's not sad at all. That's fantastic. Um, I DM two games this past weekend. Uh, I did for about nine hours on Saturday and about three and a half hours on Sunday. Um, on Sunday, I ran the beginning of The Lost Man of Fandelver for a bunch of folks who are completely new to Dungeons and Dragons who have never played before. It was such a wonderful experience being able to bring them in. They were very open and excited about getting little into it. I was a little worried that they wouldn't want to do any role playing or that they were going to be really battle heavy. They were kind of okay with being open to role playing, which was really nice. Um, it was pretty awesome to see them start to like feel out their characters a little bit. We have a um, half orc barbarian, an Asimar paladin, a rock gnome rogue, and a high elf wizard, I think. Yeah, I think that's right. I probably missed one of those up. But they were starting to get into character a little bit and, and joke with each other and like they, they decided that they needed to buy provisions for their trip to Fandal, to Fandalin, and I was like, sure. And so they met a cheesemonger, her name is Della. The, the, um, the, uh, the paladin has now decided that he's going to spread the word about this amazing cheesemonger, Della, so that if people go to Neverwinter, they should look her up because she is the best blue cheese in town. Um, <coughs> that's what makes for fun little addition that you're not going to get in any other game. Also, when I revealed the map for the Goblin Ambush, which is the very first encounter that you have in uh, The Lost Minds of Fandelver, uh, they about lost their minds when I pulled the neoprene back on the table and showed them the map. Now the part that's sad is that I had not yet discovered that the 
dynamic dungeons, and I'm saying that wrong now, probably. Uh, yeah, no, dynamic dungeons have actually made that map with the two dead horses on the middle of the road, blocking the path, whatever. It's fine. It would have been really cool to be able to show them a, a moving map rather than the static one that I had, but you can't have everything. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, also talking about D&D this weekend, my nine hour session shouldn't have been quite as exhausting as it ended up being. It was emotionally exhausting more than it was mentally exhausting. My players ended up role playing for about a good four hours at the beginning. Uh, they were dealing with a lot of unresolved issues and so it sort of turned into a mini therapy session for them. They had a bunch of interactions with the people in the main town. But it was interesting to sort of see them start to struggle with these group dynamic questions. Now, when I, when I started this homebrew campaign, um, I did not have any idea what I was doing, and I still don't have any idea what I was doing. Um, but after the second session, I wrote a really big note to myself in my notebook that said, never allow players to start without a commonality or a common thread that brings them together ever again because I let everybody write their completely own backstories and they just happened, they, they did the traditional, we're in a tavern, we all meet up to go on an adventure, but they all kind of got roped in very different ways, they all have very different personalities and trying to get them to all mesh when I don't think in actuality their characters would probably mesh very well um, has been extremely interesting and we played a lot this last, well, almost every session, we deal with their interpersonal drama uh, which in story time, they've only been together for a little bit less than three weeks. So that's not very long in story development, but we've been playing since August and it's about to be April. So that's quite a while and we're all really good friends. So we've been talking about it and, and working through these things, but knowing that they're going to be continuing to work on these characters and continuing to develop these relationships between these characters, it's been really interesting to see how they've handled it and how they've dealt with it, especially as I had just been like, yeah, you guys are going to do great together. Oh, wait, no, these characters, this, this doesn't work. Hmm. And so it's been a really big stumbling block for me as a DM to sort of try to figure out ways to pull them towards each other and find those commonalities and find those threads um, to be able to make them a more cohesive party as they continue to play. So one of the things that I've done is everyone has faults and they've been very good at picking apart uh, the faults of Eric's character um, because he is a bit more on the chaotic side. Uh, he, he, he he likes to say that he's neutral, but he's not true neutral. He's chaotic neutral. I, I, I am not going to say that he's evil because I don't, I'm not allowing evil characters in this campaign, but he has some tendencies that make him seem like he does not know where his moral compass lies. And we have a druid in the group who is very like moral compass focused. Um, and so having the two of them kind of go at each other and Eric and Emily are literally the two most intense role players in the group, not that the others aren't, but having them go at each other has been really interesting. So this past week, I sort of had planted these seeds for them to finally have yet another showdown. And I've been trying to make Eric's character, Noravar, seem more, um, make it seem more possible for people to understand where he's coming from. And so he had a heart to heart with them. And then he also pointed out that Will's character killed a guy who was unarmed in the last encounter. And Emily's character ended up sneaking away and doing something against what the party would have done. So the point that he made was that everyone has faults and everyone has to work together and communicate with each other in order for them to work together as a team. And now that they're on a really major quest to try to take down this cult that is influencing the city potentially uh, with a master plan to take down the city, we shall see, um, they are realizing that they have to put these differences aside and realize 
So Eric's character is very focused on the ends justify the means and he's out to protect the party. Whereas Emily's character is we need to do good in the world and we need to bring balance. And it's like, okay, well, let's find the common ground between that. And so they spent four hours working through not just that. We also did shopping and all these other things. We didn't have any battles. And that was, oh, <coughs> sorry. And that was okay. That was a good thing. That was what they needed as players, as characters, to get to the next step in their evolution as a party. They also picked a name and got tattoos. Not in real life, just tattoos in the game, but magical ones that move, which I thought was really cool. Um, but, but rightly so, I took all the things that they were talking about and I have been throughout all of these games and have been trying to figure out how to work them more into the storylines and into the sort of themes that they're encountering to try to build this really sort of unshakable, unbreakable bond um, and then test that. Let's, let's see how we can flex that bond. Is it going to break? Is it not going to break? How do you get it back together? How do you make it stronger? And so it's this constant interweaving of uh, challenge uh risk versus reward and challenging and trusting and communicating uh and and stress and pressure points and you know trial by fire for them in a way that is really exciting so i've been really happy with how this has all come together regardless of whatever monsters they're fighting this week that being said they finally got to fight some very classic Dungeons and Dragons monsters uh, this past week. They are actually, I, I, they fought a, um, they fought a gelatinous cube, which ate our paladin, uh, which is excellent because he, <laughs> we have a running joke that he wants to be a cube. Uh, so he was in a cube, close enough. Uh, and they also, uh, they also finally fought their first mimic. Basically, I think both of those monsters were specifically designed for our paladin. Hmm. Now that I think about it, he really likes destroying boxes. He didn't get, he didn't get eaten. He actually very smartly had his pet, uh, his steed go over and investigate it. That was interesting. But, um, yes, they are actually running a part, a modified version of a map from RPG Crate, which if you guys don't know what RPG Crate is, you should definitely check out some of our RPG Crate unboxings. It is one of the best subscription boxes that you can possibly get if you are a DM or a GM. Um, and they are not just limited to 5th edition or to uh, Dungeons and Dragons. One of the crates was definitely space uh, Starfinder-y based, which I thought was really great. And Eric has it if he ever gets around to uh, being beyond the adventure path, he'll have that as an option. So uh, very, very cool stuff. They did not get very far in the dungeon because they had spent so much time role playing. Not a problem, means it's there for next time. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, I think that is gonna be it for today. I know I told you I was gonna be kind of all over the place, sorry about that. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you wanna know more about anything, um, don't forget to check out the uh, dynamic, the DMGE, I really gotta, understand the naming process there but anyway um check them out on kickstarter if you see this video before it is up or check out dynamic dungeons on patreon if you're interested in animated maps i'm hawking other people's stuff they didn't tell me to do it but i'm doing it anyway um yeah i think that's gonna be it so uh don't forget to like subscribe uh uh, comment below, support us on Patreon, uh, and who knows, maybe I'll see you on the next adventure. All right. Bye guys.